Welcome to another edition of the UTPA Men's Basketball Show. My name is Jonah Goldberg. He is Mr. Dan Hipsher, the head coach of the UTPA Men's Basketball Team. Just one game this past week for the Bronx, a light schedule and a trip to Las Cruces, New Mexico to take on a defending WAC champion who's won three out of the last four WAC championships, New Mexico State, and of course the preseason favorite with the preseason uh, player of the year. Um, and uh, that game went in favor of the Aggies, 90 to 78. Well, as you can tell by the score, uh, we really didn't struggle offensively, although we we made a few poor decisions and missed a couple easy ones. Uh, we just could never get them stopped. Uh, part of that is their size, strength, speed, and ability, uh, and part of it was a lot of mental errors that we made uh, that we watched on film yesterday. So. I walked into film session yesterday and I apologized to the team because I told them, you know, I'd, I'd try to tell them the truth and never lied to them. And after the game, I, I made a comment that I was proud of the effort, you know, and keep working at it. And uh, after I watched the film, I came in and said, look, I was lying. Uh, here's 31 examples defensively where we weren't <laughs> on it mentally and uh, I never want to lie to you. So here, watch this. And, and they got to see it, you know. And Jonah, what, what you factor into basketball is about you know, 31 possessions of a game is about 31 points. You know, typically teams score at a rate of a, around a point of possession, maybe a little more. So if you make 31 defensive errors mentally, that, that can account for 31 points for the other team. Then we had about 14 mental errors offensively. So, you know, there's a 45-point swing. I'm not saying you're perfect, no. but it, if you just handled half of that, you know, there's a 20-point swing in the game. And not that they're not going to make a hard shot on you if you don't make that mistake or, or whatever, but giving points away because of mental errors is, is, uh, was a real problem for us. And, and we allowed them to get in transition, and we, we knew we couldn't do that when we combined the size and strength of these guys and our difficulty getting a rebound. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it was interesting looking at the, the way the size differential worked out, whereas... Uh, your team shot 53% from behind the arc. They shot something like 67% from inside the arc. No doubt about it. it. It was, if they missed it, they got it back. If they, if they got to the rim, you know, they, they popped it up in the air above us. And, uh, I mean, 6'10", 280, and, and 6'10", 235 were a real problem for us around the rim. But, uh, and, then, and then you look at it, they missed 22 shots from the field. Okay, they got 10 of them back on offensive rebounds. So, you know, hard, hard to win when you're dealing with those kind of numbers. And unfortunately, we still had a chance to win because we turned them over a little bit and, you know, uh, we, we did some things and we took care of the ball, you know, only nine, nine turnovers and 17 assists. So uh, just their physicality against our uh, intelligence and mentality and, and uh, uh, hopefully skill but uh, they, they, they won out that night. Game started out well. You were up 17-5. to five. What was different from there to the rest of the game? Well, we had great ball movement early. We knocked some shots in. Uh, they turned it over a couple times early, so we got two runouts. And, uh, you know, we built a nice little lead. And then we really played them back into it. They didn't play themselves back into it. We, that was the major part of our errors right there that got them going. You know, we, we could have ground through some possessions and you know you're going to miss some shots you know nobody's going to shoot perfect but but we missed a couple easy ones in there and then we didn't get back and transition properly and made a few errors so a combination of defensive errors uh, with a little offensive inefficiency and maybe a couple quick shots that allowed them to get back in it and then you know it was seesaw back and forth the whole rest of the half they jumped out to about an eight point lead we cut it to three at half and uh then, you know, second half, same thing. You know, it's, uh, they, I, th I think fairly early it was 3-5, 3-5, and then it goes to 10 or 12, and then it was somewhere between 8 and 12 the rest of the game, and we just couldn't get over the hump because we couldn't get them stopped. Yeah, uh, I mean, they shot 57% from the field uh, for, for the game. Obviously, a lot of that from the inside, as, uh, as we already mentioned, but you know, juxtaposing that with your outside shooting, it was uh, your best three-point shooting uh, performance of the season, 8 of 15. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we got good shots. We knocked them down. Uh, to be honest, the 15 threes we took were all pretty wide open looks and, and, you know, we made some of them. So that was really good for us. It was good to see Leathers bounce back and start knocking a couple down. And uh, Javon shot it well. Boga made a couple desperations there at the end, but uh, he, uh, he played well. And, you know, we've just got to get to a point where there's these physical big teams are, are really affecting us. You know, Seattle just manhandled us in here. And we've got to get a little more fight to us and maybe change the game in a way where the physicality isn't quite as dominant. Uh, maybe we got to get a little pressure going. But we talked about this last week. UMKC, Chicago State, we played well on the road there. They couldn't just beat us up. You know, they're kind of our size. So, you know, we've got to get where we get something out of Josh and Latte at that five spot that counters the physicality. So, you know, if, if I'm in there with you, I'm going to post you up and beat you up. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so what can you do to me? Take me outside, use speed, you know, different ways. All right. So, you know, smash mouth on one end, but then you're exploiting them on the other end. And we've got to be able to do that at the five. Their five man never left the front of the rim. He, he just stood there and, and tied up the lane. And uh, I made a comment after the game, you know, I, I told the kids that driving was very important for us, but we needed to probably pull up and shoot the, the mid-range. Because at the rim, it was, uh, it sounded like a volleyball game. <laughs> there were a couple of them, I, I was just walking through the gym and told uh, Brian and him, I said, that sounded like our game at the rim the other night, those <laughs> balls being hit out there. So uh, very hard, uh, and, and they're very big and long. And, and, you know, we got beat up at the free throw line pretty good too, which was a big factor in the game. Yeah, uh, you know the it's the foul differential wasn't huge, but you're right. Uh, there were a lot more opportunities yeah, at the right. line for New Mexico State. Fourteen more. Yeah, they uh, they hurt us there. And, and to be honest, you ask about that stretch in the first half. Boga picked up a, a quick second foul in the middle of that, and we didn't get real good bench play uh, the other night. So when he went out, you know, he he and Javon mean a lot to to what we're doing offensively. Yeah, and your two leading scorers, and you know, you look at the box, and it's the uh, it, it, you pretty much figured out who your go-to scores are, and I mean, it's been Farrell and Boga all year. Hines is averaging uh, almost 16 points per game in conference play, and there he had another 16 with seven boards. So, and then Justin Leathers has been coming around, and I mean, those are the guys uh, when you have four players in double figures; those are usually the four. No doubt about it, you know, and uh, uh, Hines will tell you. That, that could have been a 30-point game for him. They did not guard him on the perimeter. He had probably, of the, of the 10 shots he missed, uh, five or six just wide open 15-footers. And again, they were hard to drive into. So what happened is Shaq missed a couple of those, and then he started getting nervous and driving, and then he ends up missing 10 shots with five turnovers. So efficiency-wise for him, although 16.7 rebounds, he'd, he'd probably agree that wasn't one of his better nights, that it could have been a 25 to 30 point night for him the way they were guarding us. Because they tried to take Leathers away with a perimeter player to keep him from spotting up. Mm -hmm. And they guarded Shaq with a four man, which allowed him the freedom. He just, he just didn't knock down the easy ones he had. And, and, uh, but he's playing really well for us. And uh, as, as I told you last week, uh, could have been co-player of the week in the league with uh, Shaquille Boga. And, and with that, those two guys combined with Farrell, who people put a lot of effort and time into to get stopped, uh, th they've been three pretty good players for us and doing a good job for us. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the five men was kind of just standing underneath the rim. Now, were, was that uh, when you had Cleveland or Toivonen out there, were they trying to pull him away or were they, and he just wouldn't leave? No, he isn't going to leave because they haven't proven that they can make a shot, you know, right now from 10 feet or even that they'll look at the rim. And, and we try to encourage them and get them going with it. But one of the things you can do when people aren't guarding you is, is quick pass and ball screen to make that guy come up or dribble hand off at people. So we did that a little bit and we still got some shots by Bogan and Farrell off of that. But we encourage those kids during the week. But, you know, during the game, it's hard to tell a guy – hey, Jonah, shoot the ball, you know, like they've got to feel that within them, you know, because trying to force a guy to shoot almost puts more pressure on him. So 
they got to do what they do. And right now, that confidence isn't isn't there. And uh, you know, somewhere, you know, junior senior, they hopefully will will gain it. Well, now two and four in whack play, and you, you know that puts you in fifth place. That's not a bad place to be at this point of the season. Well, the the difficult thing about it is, and, and I think we discussed this, we, we've got to get to where we play as well at home as we do on the road. And we, we've really been playing well out there, which is a good future sign for the program. That, you know, the way we play, the motion, the movement gives people problems home or away. And, and uh, you try to tell kids it's 94 by 50 out there, you know, go out and play the way you play. But we have been extremely nervous here at home. And... Somewhere they got to get past that. They got to got to win one. That Idaho loss probably really hurt, you know, in the fact of building a, a confidence and a mentality. But but uh, we've we've got to find a way to get by that. We we've been down the last two home games. I think 12-0 and 13-0 to start the game. So you know, then when you factor in what the score is at the end of the game, it, you know, it's a it's a big deal. So we've got to get past that. And uh, you know, these two games will give us, at the end of this, I believe four home games, four road games. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if we could get to four and four this weekend and, and uh, even things out, uh, that's pretty good considering the way we started out at home. Yeah, I mean, you're right there in the middle of the pack. And uh, your, first, your first game is against uh, what I guess some people would consider a surprise. I mean, for me, having seen them, it's not really a surprise. Uh, you know, Utah Valley is uh, undefeated in the conference so far. Well, you know, they, they won a game with uh, a miracle up at Seattle. Uh, and, you know, that's what happens with, with teams who are, are going well. But uh, Dick's a good coach. His son's a good player. Uh, they have a very good post player inside. Uh, and they, the rest of those kids are highly skilled uh, stretch guys that can really open up and uh, shoot the ball. So they're smart and uh, they do a good job and they're tough-minded. So it, it, it's a heck of an opponent coming in for us. Again, though, not a team that, other than, you know, the big kid, not a team that just comes in and physically plays above us, you know. Uh, he's a couple inches bigger, but the rest of the team is more our size, you know, 6'6 six, six and, and on down. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll have an opportunity to play and, and uh, play well, but they're going to make you play well. They're not going to give you anything. Now, uh, Dick Hunsaker, head coach there, at one point, he had an assistant. You, you may be a little familiar with him. Uh, he's your associate head coach, Andy. And uh, does that uh, help you to learn a little insight into what Dick might do? Well, no doubt. I mean, we know the way they play. His, his, uh, when Andy was with him, uh, he had a great perimeter player named Toulson that was a, a great shooter, a, a cousin of Danny Ainge's. So they did more perimeter-type you know, shooting staggers and different things. Now they play more through that center. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we know how they guard, what they're about, what, what they're doing. And, and uh, you know, both of us have known Dick a long time. And, and they're, they're just a solid program with a bunch of good kids and, and, and that are going to fight. But, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a little insight there. <laughs> that game is Thursday at 7 p.m. at the UTPA Fieldhouse. If you bring a coat, you're going to get in for free. Tim's Coats, a great promotion where they're trying to get coats for uh, – for people in need to keep people warm in the winter. And, um, you know, Tim Smith, the chief meteorologist at Channel 5, has been doing this for 28 years. They've collected hundreds of thousands of coats. So we hope you'll bring out a coat and help everybody uh, keep warm. And then you'll come into the field house where it is warm anyway. So even if you donate the coat you're wearing, you'll be fine for at least two hours anyway, and then you can enjoy the game. Well, they said uh, the weather's going to be nice by Thursday. so. Wear your coat the next two days and then give it away on Thursday. You'll be all right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We record this, and it's, it's dropped into the 50s which uh, uh, down here. And yesterday it was in the 70s, and tomorrow I believe the forecast said in the 70s as well. So we're back to our nice weather. And <laughs> yeah, it, uh, that front's coming through and uh, that everybody else is getting punished with. It's, it's uh, dipping into here, but it should be nice again uh, late in the week. And then uh, after Utah Valley on Saturday, uh, Bakersfield comes to town, and uh, then you'll, you'll finish your first lap through the conference. Well, exactly. And uh, Bakersfield comes in with a, a guard, Isaiah Grayson. It's, uh, again, a preseason all-conference pick, great score, and uh, got a couple brothers, the Ahmed kids, that can really be physical inside. They've struggled, though. They, it surprised me. They were very good in the preseason. They've struggled here in the first half. And, 
I talked to kids about this the other day. You know, we have proven with our play on the road that we can play with anybody in the league. So, you know, come tournament time, you know, we're there, okay? Whether we can get back in this conference regular season race is going to be somewhat dictated by other teams now. Unfortunately, it's out of our hands since we've built, you know, a, a deficit. But we can only improve that this weekend and uh, play each game and every game, you know, the way we need to play it and see if we can find our way back in it. Yeah, and I mean, history, uh, certainly history has shown that once you make a conference tournament, it doesn't really matter what seed you are. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that a school just up the road in San Antonio uh, pulled, off, pulled off something in the Southland Conference Tournament that they weren't supposed to do. So, hey, anything's possible. Well, no doubt about that. And, and again, it's not like it's going to take a miracle for us or anything. No. We, we've been in every game. And, and again, the, the, the big physical teams have bothered us. But again, if, 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 if we do what we do well, uh, there's an opportunity for us each and every night. Yeah, I mean, you talked about your play on the road. I mean, you've had a few home games, too. You know, Houston, I look at, or Sam Houston State, where there have been opportunities. And, uh, you know, 6-15, and 15, you could easily turn around into a plus 500 record right now. And I know it, does, it may not look as good, but I think for anybody who's seen the games, they realize what this team could be and can be and why it makes you guys so dangerous come postseason. Well, no doubt about it. If we, if we had taken care of some business at home, you know, we'd be a – say a 10 11 team or a 9 12 you know wherever even with the schedule we've played and even in those high major games you know where uh, we're playing guarantee i mean that we had opportunity in, in many of those so smu's the only one that really got away from us in the second half but until the 10 minute mark we were there so kids have played hard done a good job they just got to keep fighting and and uh, make sure we improve each and every day and each and every game Bronx take on Utah Valley on Thursday at 7 p.m. And then Bakersfield, it's Saturday at 7 p.m. Doors at 6. Tickets and more information go to utpabronx.com. If you want to see uh, Coach Hipsher and the Bronx in the conference tournament, well, Viva Whack Vegas. The conference tournament in Las Vegas this year in mid-March. It's over spring break. So I don't know about you, but I'm thinking Vegas for spring break. And while you're there, you can go check out some basketball. We've got tickets. Uh, we can hook you up with all session pass, 165 bucks. You save quite a bit of money off of buying them at the door. You get to see all 14 games, men's and women's. We can also help you out with great hotel and uh, other travel uh, deals if you give us a call at 956-665-2221. And then you can come out and enjoy Vegas, enjoy some basketball. It's a win-win. Oh, it'd be a win. You know, we'll win games and all the fans will win money. We guarantee it. <laughs> As the little disclaimer runs across the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Just remember, the house always wins, except when it doesn't. He's Coach Hipsher. He's Dan Hipsher. He's the head coach of the UTPA men's basketball team. My name's Jonah Goldberg. We'll see you back here next week on 956sports.com.